We're live from Staples Center here in Los Angeles, California. Tonight, our main event will feature light heavyweight champion Roy Jones Jr. fighting what some believe is his toughest test. his status as pound for pound the best fighter in the business. He'll attempt that in the backyard of one of the toughest hombres around in Julio Gonzalez. As we welcome you inside of Staples Center up here to our host position as we get set for a wonderful evening of boxing. And good evening, everyone. I'm James Brown and welcome to Staples Center. I'm pleased to be working once again with Hall of Fame manager and trainer Emmanuel Stewart. And Manny, I tell you, there's no question about it. We'll be talking about Roy's effort to recapture that title as pound for pound the best in just a bit. But the challenger, Gonzalez, he's a likable, tough fighter without a doubt, one whose trainer, Matt Kurihara, refused to take him to altitude and to train him. As a matter of fact, didn't even isolate him for training camp. Your thoughts on that? My thoughts on that, James, is twofold. First of all, I'm not a real big fan of altitude training. For the most part, I think that if a guy's in shape, he's in shape. And that's as a result of experience that I've had in fights. But I do believe in having to have my fighter be isolated where he can focus and concentrate on his fight. And in this particular case, it's even more so because in this case here, the fighter, Gonzalez, actually stayed at his mother-in-law's home with his full family. And that can be a distraction for anybody. And he's getting ready for the biggest fight of his life, and he's still staying at home. That's correct, and I believe you have to focus. Everybody, when you have a big event coming up in your life, regardless of what you may feel or what may be situations, you need to be focused because your mental energy is just as important as your physical energy. And it's impossible to be at home and be distracted by personal things every day and be as effective as you can be. All right, Emmanuel, we'll examine that throughout the evening as well. All right, also during tonight's show, America Online members will be able to get information about tonight's main event and score the Jones-Gonzalez fight round by round and we'll give results during and after the fight all right folks hbo and tvko fight fans know that our blow by blow announcer is jim lampley what you may not know is that jim underwent hip replacement surgery for a second time recently unfortunately this afternoon jim apparently dislocated his hip and is receiving medical attention stepping in to fill his shoes is our own fran charles who will be working alongside big george foreman and larry merchant and right now let's head downstairs to Fran Charles. Fran? All right, JB, let's take a look at the tail of the tape for our opening lightweight bout between 2000 Olympic bronze medalist Christian Bejarano taking on Lee Willis. And there you see Willis, 12 years older than Bejarano. Both fighters the same height. Bejarano enjoying the three inch reach advantage. Both fighters coming in at 136 pounds, and Bejarano, when he stepped on our unofficial scales tonight, gained just nine pounds. All right, let's send it over now to our unofficial ringside score, Harold Lutterman, for the rules of the Okay, bout. listen up, because the rules are a little bit different. The Christian Bejarano Lee Willis fight is scheduled for four rounds using the rules of the California State Athletic Commission. There is no three knockdown rule. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards at the start of the fourth round. Before that, it's a technical draw. And you can be saved by the bell in the fourth and final round only. Fred. All right, Harold. Well, first in the ring, we'll take a look at the former bronze medalist, Christian Bearano. 
comes in with a record of 3 and 0, 3 knockouts. Barrano comes from a fighting family. His grandfather was a fighter and he started boxing at the age of 7. And now let's take a look across the ring to Lee Willis. Willis comes in with a record of 1 and 1, fighting out of Houston, Texas. Just recently debuted at the start of the year. And now let's send it up to Michael Buffer for the official pre-fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Staples Center, Los Angeles, California, home of the NBA world champion Los Angeles Lakers, where tonight Bob Arum's top rank incorporated along with Square Ring is proud to present an evening of professional boxing for your entertainment. Brought to you in association with your undisputed, undefeated king of beer, Budweiser. Always proud to be your bud. All the bouts tonight are sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. Chairman Manuel Cal Soto, Commissioners Al Duchaney, Elmer Costa, Van Gordon Souter, and Sanford Michaelman, Executive Officer Rob Lynch. Physicians at ringside tonight will be Dr. Paul Wallace, Dr. Van Lemons, Dr. Smith Ketchum, and Dr. Mike DeLuca. The timekeepers will be Mike Millsap and Debbie Garcia. Well, let's get things started, ladies and gentlemen, with four rounds of boxing. This is in the lightweight division. Your three, your three judges at ringside scoring this bout on the 10-point bus system will be Pat Russell, Marty Salmon, and Fritz Warner. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Lou Moret. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and weighing in at 136 pounds. He brings a professional record to the ring of one and one. Fighting out of Houston, Texas, here is Lee Showtime Willis. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with red and green trim, and weighing in also at 136 pounds. His professional record, three bouts, three victories, three knockouts to his credit. From Chihuahua, Mexico, here is the undefeated Christian Bejarano. Okay, sir. I'm giving you instruction in the dressing room is have a good, clean fight, touch gloves, Let and me. wait the bell. Good luck. Bejarano is the prospect. Willis, starting his professional career at the age of 32, earlier this year, is the classic opponent. Anytime? Okay. Bejarano Willis, the first of five fights that you will see tonight on our TVKO telecast. Bayerano the southpaw. Willis, the conventional variety. Willis had any wider of a stance, he'd be outside the ring. A lot of, a lot of searching, very little firing early on. on young Olympians and just what kind of experience they need. Bejarano, this is just his fourth fight. Well, Bejarano is a well-schooled fighter, and he's in with a guy who doesn't even know what he's going to do next. So it's hard to really tell him what to do. You just can't jab because this guy is able to slap you just as you deliver the jab. He, although he's not moving, he's dynamic. You can see the nerves in his chest. It's hard to settle down a young Sinan and just say, do what you've been doing in the gym every day. And that's what his corner's going to have to wrestle with. Willis 
firing with a right hook. Looks like Willis isn't even used to knowing how to wear his mouthpiece, George. Yeah, all of those things he's supposed to know how to do. He's learning for the probably the second time in his life. The purpose of a fight like this for Bejarano is to give him the confidence that the promoter and his manager really think he's going somewhere, putting him on the undercard of a big event in the big city, just to make him feel, okay, these guys have my best interests and they think I'm going to be uh, a contender someday. Willis is fighting with his shoes tied in a real strange way. They seem to be loose, but they are not. But this guy's a cat, and he can scratch you, so Bejarano better be careful. Willis certainly is shifty. Just a reminder, interpreting for us in the corner of Christian Bejarano will be Ray Torres. It can only get better, folks. I know it's slippery there, and he, he's very elusive. Let's get some water here. He's a very slippery guy. You gotta be calm. Pay attention. You, make sure you, your left hand use a jab twice, and when he comes, you gotta get him with that. Hit him with the uppercut. I'm gonna warn you one more time. Keep throwing your right hand straight in, okay? Once you throw in, step into your left, come back with a left hook, okay? Always have to come forward to you. You gotta be alert. You throw your right hand when he comes forward to you, okay? Harold, the referee, uh, Lee Moret, uh, warned Willis of something. Did you catch what he was warning him about? Limpio, eh? Limpio. Round two, scheduled for four between Willis and Bejarano. And George, you mentioned the awkwardness of Willis's shoes. His shorts have pockets in I don't know where he's got. they aren't boxing trunks for sure. But I guess they don't need to be boxing trunks. Let him go, let him go. Bejarano, 3-0, three, oh, three knockouts. Incidentally, this is the second time that he's actually fought past one round. Two of his victories came with knockouts in the first round. Willis, very tough to gauge. Shifty, wild, looping with his shots. The former Olympian beginning to get loose. Uh, trying to gauge a ping pong ball in the wind. You don't know where it's going next. So what you want to see in the young fighter uh, like Bajano is how he maintains his poise, how he sticks to the basics, doesn't get rattled, doesn't do something foolish. When you've had an outstanding amateur career like Bejarano, you've seen that when a guy breaks the rules in a professional ring, he doesn't have to do what the amateurs have done. There hasn't been one body shot good landed for Bejarano. One body shot, and that's where you want to stop a quick fella like this. Go to his chest, go to, the, to his stomach if you want those knockouts. Otherwise, he's just a loose cannon out there. George, can he learn, meaning Bayerano, can he learn something from, from this experience, though, because Willis is so awkward? Yeah, he's, he's going to come out of this better for it. This guy's not the best fighter he's going to run into. He's going to be the most awkward to land a good shot on. <laughs> Stay to the base, go to the body, finish up on top. 
Can't hit those heads all the time. Go back to the back. Well, Christian Veerano certainly loosening up here as the second round comes to a close. Much more active. Your right hand in the form of jab. You got to cross him. You get in your rhythm. And then step back and then hit him with the uppercut. A jab with a cross. That's what you need to do. No jumping. Relax. Relax. When he comes in, cross. Say right. Then left hook. And move to the left. Right hand, left hook. You got to do this all night. He's left. Okay? Here's Willis pressing forward. A nice short left that landed on the forehead. Right up, right up. Let's go, second up. That's the way to do it. Come on, PG. Stay back. The third round now of a scheduled four-rounder, a lightweight battle between Christian Veerano and Lee Willis. We talked about Veerano getting more busy in the second round. 13 of 82 shots in the second round, just three of 31 in the first, according to our punch deck copy box numbers. Larry, so many great Mexican fighters we've seen over the years, but Verano, just the second Olympian in 12 years, 13 years to, to win a medal. Yeah, well, the reason for that is because most of the uh, Mexican fighters we see start very, very early. They don't want to invest all that time in being an amateur. They usually come from the poorest and meanest circumstance, and they're professionals often by the time they're in their late teens. Uh, Bejarano, I understand, in fact, joined the Army in Mexico for yes, a few years so that he could train for the Olympics. shiftiness of Willis, but he's starting to settle in nicely here. that Bejarano's had this round is that he's allowed, he's made Willis to come after him a little bit. He backed away and turned into the boxer. And I think that's because Willis is tired. Big right uppercut from Christian Bejarano. You can't hit a good boxer. You gotta make a boxer come to you. That's what Bejarano's done. Sure sign that Willis is tired is half his mouthpiece is hanging out of his mouth he's tired like a fox Come on, you gotta put well, pressure on him. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Breathe, come on. 
Come on, Lee. Right? This is loud. You okay? How are you feeling? Okay, you jabs and you cross them. And you make sure you, they're uppercut. You got to go for it. A combination. That's all we need. It's the last round. We got to do it. Stay back. Stay back. Tienta los guantes. Touch gloves. Tienta los guantes. All right, as we start the fourth and final round, let's bring in Harold Letterman to see how he has a fight score. Okay, friends. Saturday to 27, three rounds to nothing in favor of the Olympian in a weight trunks, Christian Bejarano. You know, you made a very interesting point, Fred. I don't think that mouthpiece really fits Lee Willis. It's got to be bothering him. It's amazing it hasn't come out to this point. But in any case, uh, Christian Bejarano doing a nice job with that right hand for Southpaw. Most Southpaws pull with their right hands. He snaps it. He's got a good right jab, good right uppercut. He's winning the fight on clean, effective punches, mostly with the right hand, which is surprising when you see Southpaws. And George, you made an interesting point in between rounds in the corner. Lee Willis hardly looked like a fighter who wanted to come out and start this fourth and final round. What's the difference between a champion and a contender? Motivation. You gotta be motivated to go to the next round. Sometimes you can look in the audience and see a movie star or something to make you say, I'm just not going to be ordinary. Willis haven't seen anything. <laughs> Barrano leads up with two hooks, a left and a right. Now Willis is looking for an escape route here. Barrano turning it on. Lou Moret watching, and now he waves him off. The midway point of the fourth and final round, Lou Moret waves off Lee Willis. The fight's over. Kristen Bayerano keeps his perfect knockout record intact, improving to 4 0 and with four knockouts. Harold talked about the effectiveness, effectiveness of Bayerano's right hand snapping. You see anything that you like? Uh, can this kid develop, George? I think he's got some good stuff, but you're gonna have to see him in with a good opponent before you can judge all of that. Willis had a lot of things going for himself, but like I said earlier, he had no motivation. Sometimes you got to fight for more than just a paycheck. And there are some guys out there who love to be in the ring with him. The first of five fights that we will bring you this evening in the books. We will see down the road <laughs> what Christian Bayerano was able to learn from fighting an awkward, shifty fighter like Lee Willis. He'll learn more in the training between these fights than he will in the fights at this stage of his career. Willis was totally exhausted by this time. He didn't want to go on as George suggested. After the third round, he came out and uh, got out of there as quickly as he could in the fourth. Lou Moret wisely stepping in and ending this. This is a pro, young pro against a pro who is really an amateur. Okay. All right, let's send it now up to Michael Buffer with the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Lou Moret steps in and calls a halt to the bout. The official time, one minute, 30 seconds of round number four. His record now, four bouts. Four victories, four knockouts from Chihuahua, Mexico, Christian Bejarano.
right, well, let's take a look at the total punches from our punch dad numbers. And there you see Kristen Bayerano far more busy than Lee Willis. Not necessarily landing at a high percentage, but that had more to do with Willis and his awkwardness than Bejarano. And now let's send it back up to our host position, James Brown. JB? All right, Fran, thank you very much.